Good evening ladies and gentlemen this is Dr Paul thank you very much for tuning to our channel once again today This evening I want to talk about hyperkalemia Hyperkalemia don't mess up with hyperkalemia calcium or uh, sodium and these kind of elements they have some window of action but for hyperkalemia the window of action is very very low it's a true emergency in patients with hyperkalemia you should always think why they have that particular problem are they taking any potassium supplements or do they have any kidney failure because in kidney failure potassium is not excreted properly also patients with diabetes and uh, diabetic ketoacidosis for example it shows in the blood hyperkalemia now patients will suffer especially when levels go above 6 milliequivalents per liter they develop symptoms like neuromuscular and cardiac problems and ekg shows very specific changes as the potassium level increases in the blood from peak T waves to spacing of the QRS complex to ventricular fibrillation and ultimately to a flat line indicating death. Now you should be always treating hyperkalemia. There are three goals in hyperkalemia treatment. I will be talking about them today. First of all let us say about the basic definitions. What is hyperkalemia? Hyperkalemia, we can define it as a serum potassium greater than 5 milliequivalents per liter. Now, it is uh, more dangerous than hypokalemia because hypokalemia has more window to action than hypo hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia is more life-threatening than hypokalemia. And now, Sometimes it results from increased potassium intake. For example, you, a patient is taking potassium supplements along with Lasix. He forgot to take Lasix, but he's taking potassium supplements. So in such patient, hyperkalemia can happen. And also when there is decreased renal excretion. And you see, potassium normally stays intracellularly, but certain times when uh, cellular injury happens like hemolysis, thrombocytosis. In those cases, potassium, it comes out of the cell with the transmembrane shift. So, that is another common cause. Now, let me talk about some medication cells, some medications like ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, digitalis, in digitalis toxicity they cause hyperkalemia and succinylcholine it causes hyperkalemia now other disorders when there is reduced renal excretion like uh, renal failures and uh, medications and uh, type 4 renal tubular acidosis Edison's disease and also increased release into the extracellular space like uh, hemolysis, rhabdomyolysis, tumor lysis syndrome and conditions that increase transcellular shift like acidosis and exercise and also you remember insulin it increases I mean it increases the shift of potassium from extracellular space into intracellular space so what happens in insulin deficiency all the potassium is staying outside so that's a hypokalemic, hyperkalemic condition so Medications always think of them, ACE inhibitors and also potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone and drugs like trimethoprim or triamterin, they block secretion of potassium in the distal collecting duct. And as I mentioned already, digital toxicity causes hyperkalemia. And sometimes patients also develop pseudo hyperkalemia. You should be thinking of pseudo hyperkalemia when you say hemolysis, thrombocytosis, or even sometimes when the labs do not do the test immediately, or even when they manipulate tourniquet around the hand, 
patient can develop pseudo hyperkalemia and uh, so if you don't see any particular reason for a high potassium value in a patient always think about pseudo hyperkalemia now clinical findings patients develop very non specific symptoms like muscular fatigue or weakness paresthesias and uh, as the ventricle fibrillates patient might get palpitations and also lose consciousness and ultimately cardiac arrhythmias now ekg changes very very important the ekg changes start from large amplitude t waves then you see peaked t waves then you see QRS widening, then ultimately you see ventricular fibrillation that ends with SSTLA. Now, with each rise in potassium level, for example, when the potassium level is like uh, 5, we see just normal EKG. When it is like 7.5, expect peaking of T waves. When it is like uh, uh, 8.5, when you can see QRS widening and uh, also patient starts to develop depression of ST segment when the potassium level reaches like 9. When it is 10 you will actually see increased widening of QRS and T and ultimately more than 10 you see biphasic tracing and at 11 you will see ventricular fibrillation and if it is like 12 or 12.5 you will see SSTLA. So follow with EKG always when you, susp when you see a patient with hyperkalemia because they can go into a systole very quickly without treatment. Now I want to talk a few minutes about treatment. The treatment is warranted when the hyperkalemia level exceeds 6 and uh, order an EKG immediately and uh, the goals are we have to stabilize cardiac membrane potential. Secondly, we should move potassium from extracellular space into intracellular space. And ultimately, we should remove that excess potassium from the body. So those are the goals. And uh, don't think of, many, many students actually think of the third goal, like uh, what should, uh, how should I eliminate, can we start patient on potassium uh, uh, say like a k -exalate? So that's not the issue here. k comes the last and that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is uh, membrane stabilization. You should give patient a calcium gluconate or calcium chloride like 10% solution and you should give it over 2 to 5 minutes and you can repeat it in 10 minutes and um, then you should give regular insulin to these patients. Regular insulin like 10 units with uh, 50 ml of D50 and you can also give uh, albuterol to these patients because albuterol also increases the tensular shift of potassium. And uh, also so finally how to eliminate potassium from the body. Then comes k on sorbitol or laxatives. You can give by mouth or by uh, enemas. So those are the main points about hyperkalemia. Always remember membrane stabilization, calcium chloride, calcium gluconate, 10% solutions you can give two times and then you can use regular insulin and finally potassium excretion. Thank you very much.